My name's Sony Moran. I'll give you a little um, explanation as to the day in the life. It will be something like along the lines of uh, I would go to work of a night shift, uh, work for 12 hours, come home, take the children to school, go to the gym, and do any number of different types of workouts depending on what time the day it is. Could be standard conditioning, could be an MMA class, could be a tie boxing Hello. class, could be sparring. Could be a multitude of things involved in the sport of MMA. My days can differ slightly depending on what shift I'm on. Working at home, the service, supporting people. Trying to make a little bit of a difference to um, some blighted lives, some people's situations can be quite dire. So I suppose in some respects. Gives me a, 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 an outlook to think I'm lucky to do what I do, I suppose. Tony Moran is a light heavyweight MMA fighter from Liverpool. He recently moved to Sapphire MMA after years at the Wolfslet MMA Academy where he trained with the likes of Michael Bisping and Rampage Jackson. He works nights as a homeless support worker and trains at least twice a day. If he's not running up the hills at Everton for strength and conditioning, he's training with Simon Audley at Sapphire Gym. And if that wasn't a busy enough lifestyle, Tony has three children and a wife he manages to spend his time with. This edition of the Day in the Life series documents Tony and his manic schedule. The Fight Lounge travelled to his home and spent time with him on a personal level, meeting his friends and family in the process. The job I do is a, as a home support worker. I've done that since I was 20. So I'm 38 now, so I've been doing it for 18 years. I've worked with um, homeless families, single men, single women, anyone who's homeless. Um, across, it's, a, it's a broad range of people who can find themselves in that situation. Usually for reasons that you probably wouldn't suspect. You know, in terms of like social, environmental problems, to do people's lives, drugs, alcohol, mental health, ex-prisoners. A multitude of things can go wrong in people's lives, we all know. We're only probably one step away ourselves from ever being in that situation. And it could happen to any of us, any of our family members, whatever. So I try and take that focus of me work into me training in, in terms of like sort of how I relate to how fortunate sometimes I think I am. Sometimes I don't think I'm fortunate, sometimes I'm quite, uh, feel quite far from that, but only in terms of like feeling sorry for myself on that, on that daily grind of going to work, doing the shift, doing me saying, looking after the kids. We all suffer it, but you know, when you, when you bring yourself back down to earth, I suppose, You've got to put everything into perspective and that's what that's what the balance is between the job I do and the training I do. And I try and sort of combine them when we want to do the support work with the younger lads who look upon me and respect me probably because of what I do in terms of the fighting. You filming? <laughs> <laughs> Well, lad. Well, lad. Good boy, you're doing well, isn't Slave that? driver. It's me, son. <laughs> <laughs> I've just finished um, Hills in Everton. Famous area Liverpool, well, famous for the fighters, especially because of the, um, the steepness of the hills there. It's been used for many years by boxers. Now, obviously, MMA fighters are using it as a place to uh, sort of Test your heart on the uh, on the heartbreak hill, as they call it. So I've just done my standing conditioning there anyway, and um, heading home now. Pick the kids up, get a bit of rest, and then head to the gym for Thai class, Thai pads, bit of sparring, and then uh, an MMA class. So I've got a good three hours in the gym later, straight to work for the night shift. It was a long, long day to be had. Daughters, Emily, who's six, Heidi, who's four, and one on the way. <laughs> Next baby is due on a fight day, which is the 16th of June. So, all in and all, family man, try and, try and give up me all, try and be a devoted father. I do feel guilty at times, the amount of time I spend saying them. But at the same time, I've got to be honest enough with myself to, to think that I'd, what I'm doing is for an honourable cause, it's not. It's not a selfish reason as well. It's partly selfish reasons. I do enjoy what I do, but at the same time, there could be a payoff for the kids. You know, who, who knows what might come of all my efforts now for my children in the future? So that's the way I look at it. 
and the father spending the time in a worthy cause and not out drinking and doing other things and it's worth it, it's worth the effort and it's worth the time and it's worth what they see in their father so it makes me happy. And that's, that's important, just pales into insignificance when it comes to your kids, you know what I mean? That's it, your kids. I say, if you're a good parent, your kids are everything. And you mean everything, and there's nothing else that can ever compare to your kids, so... See you after. Yeah. Yeah. Up with this seminar, the Hoist Glaciers, just won the ultimate fighter. The fair, they had no the second one, he'd won, sorry. So what are we talking, 14 years old? 12 years old? And if he turns up on our sacks, you can, and it was just going to be like some type of street fighting seminar. And everyone's in these gears with the belt on. Looking very traditional. But anyway, we had, we had a good time there. It was fun and stuff. He was a really nice man. And I was working on the Korean nightclub at the time in, um, in Liverpool. So we go to him after the seminar, me and a couple of lads. And we ask him if he fancies coming up to the Korean, thinking he's just going to get away, mate. And later on that night, after they gave me a number, I'm at my sister's party. I think he was 30 at the time. Yeah, and then, uh, phone call, Hoist Gracie on the phone. Hey man, you still in Liverpool? Ed's Lane, McDonald's, you gonna meet me? She said, you're having a laugh. So here I am, like a 20, 20 something, early 20s. Me and this other lad who's um, my wife's cousin, Colin. We end up taking him around Liverpool city centre with his brother and a few of his mates and that. So where we are standing in the centre of Liverpool, that's he's just won the second UFC. Um, so it was big news then, wasn't it, UFC? It was like, oh, this this new sport, and this man's just beat all the, the boxes. I'm my dad! Hey, you crazy woman. So where we are in the centre of Liverpool, with like, supposedly the new hardest man in the world, you know what I mean? As, <laughs> as you view it at that age, you know what I mean? But he's a cool cat, but look at him. And get on this for the story. Last year at the Wolfie, the Wolf Slayer, standing there, and one of the other guys, Tony, Tony Bevington, one of the well-known jiu-jitsu guys in Liverpool, rings me up and says, yeah, the hoist here will be doing a seminar, he wants to come down and see you. So he remembered me from like 11 years ago, which I thought was quite nice. But yeah, what a quality man. And that's that, a little UFC story, but I should have took it up then, that's my problem. <laughs> With time constraints, work, family stuff being what they are, things are cut very finely with me, and I need, I need to, I need to be able to be at the gym within like ten minutes. I need to be out there within, you know, a short space of time to to reach me next day. I'm always somewhere. I'm always at the gym with the family, picking the kids up, going to work, coming from work. It's one thing or another. So I ain't got the time to travel. Some people travel. Good 45 minutes to get to gyms, maybe an hour, even more. It's just that that's beyond the realms of possibility for me. So, um, so we got put in touch with it at Sapphire, and it was a local gym. Didn't know much about it at the time, to be honest with you. But I went there, very credible gym, great great coaching, great team environment. Very happy there. But Simon Ord, the Thai boxing coach, he taught me a lot of um, additions to my stand up, which, you know, go there and to be taught like new little additions to things that I was maybe doing wrong or not getting right. It showed me straight away that there was, there was credibility to the gym. Same with the ground coach, Jimmy Hayes. Showed me a lot of good stuff there that um, I wasn't aware of. So it's all going well. Got a great new manager in, uh, by the name of Mike Clark, doing great things for me. He's uh, recently got me signed up to Bama, which is a, a decent show. I've got the talent and the ability and the, the history to prove that I'm capable of getting in there with anyone. But obviously, you need to prove that in an element um, which shoots the promoter and which, you know, which obviously gets your name and some recognition with their organisation. So it's fair enough what they said to me. After a short rest, it was back in the car and straight to the gym. Then a night shift. Mrs. hates me fighting. <laughs> which, it's, you know, causes problems at times because she spent so much time doing it. But she respects the fact that I'm. Hopefully spending my time in a way because maybe she doesn't view it like that, but I'm gonna respect the fact that she cares about my well-being. And so does my family. That's that's how it's probably going to the rest of my family think as well. No one likes me doing it, but I think they see Well, I don't think they do see the positive song the negative, but but, um, but I do. So I've got to just keep reinforcing it to them. Keeping, keeping them in 
confidence in my ability to deal with the situation. You know what I mean? I think I inflict more damage than I receive. So, in that respect. Training with the likes of Paul Taylor and Ian Entwistle, Tony will surely continue to be a force in the light heavyweight division. But most importantly, he'll continue to be a family man to his wife and three children. Ready? Hi, I'm Simon from uh, Sapphire MMA, Tony's coach. Um, things to say about Tony is he's really hard working in the gym, relentless. Uh, he hasn't got an off button at all. Um, trains all the way, 100% all the time, and he's absolutely brilliant at changing the lights in here because they're really, really high and he's dead tall. Tony Rams an awesome fighter. I've never seen anyone train as hard as him. The amount of times you've seen people fly on the floor in training and going, oh, sorry, 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 he's, he's unbelievable. Uh, I'm glad I'm not the one fighting him on Saturday. Yeah, train with Tony Moran, he's a great gentleman, but most of all, he's one of the best fighters I've seen from this way up half, and I can't see why not he's coming over this all the way on the weekend. Good luck, Tony. The thought of you gets me by.